Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Britt and I make videos about books and reading and illustrating. And right now I'm going to show you the 12 books that I finished in January. I don't know how this happened. It's a very good thing that this happened because I'm actually trying to read all my physical books, like my physical TBR books. And at the beginning of this month, I had 92 unread books on my shelf. So it's going very well. In this video, I'm just going to quickly go through all of the 12 books in order of how much I like them. So I will start with my least favorite one of the month and I will end with my favorite book that I read in January. Without further ado, let's get into this video. I hope you're going to like it. And let's start out with my least favorite read of this month, which was Gifts by Laura Barnett. This was a very Christmassy book that I started reading in December and I bought it in December to read it during Christmas time, but I just couldn't really get into it. And it just wasn't amazing. It was about 12 different people giving 12 different gifts to someone. And then it constantly followed a new character, which means that I didn't really have time to get to know the characters and to kind of feel for the characters because every chapter was a completely new character, which is why I didn't really enjoy this one. So I gave it like two and a half, 2.75 out of five stars. It was just cute, but nothing special. Next up, we've got The Half Moon, written by Mary Beth Keen. This was a story about two people who are married. It's about them trying to navigate their marriage. And the guy bought a, like a pub that he's very passionate about and he's trying to make it as successful as possible. But at the same time, they're struggling with things in a marriage. And it's basically about that. It was okay. I also didn't think it was very special. And that's actually everything I've got to say about this book. I wasn't too impressed, it was just okay. There were definitely some emotional moments in this book and some of the parts of this book and like their storyline was quite tough to read. Um, so I ended up giving it three and a half out of five stars. The next one is Patti Smith's early work. This is all poems and short stories that she wrote when she was, I believe around her thirties or in her thirties between 1970 and 1979. She was born in 46, so she was around like 30. I really love Patti Smith, but some of her work is just a little bit weird at times. And I sometimes feel like I can't really get into it. So some of these poems and stories, you know, were really great, but some were just a bit all over the place. And I feel like you only really understand them if you are Patti Smith and not if you are just a random person reading her poetry. And yeah, it was just fun, but not amazing. So I'm also gonna give it three and a half out of five stars. The next one is A Close and Common Orbit, written by Becca Chambers. This is the second book in the Wayfarer series, and the Wayfarer series is a sci-fi series following multiple characters traveling through space and, you know, planets and things that are happening. The first book I absolutely loved, but this book unfortunately wasn't amazing. The thing is, this book is kind of a standalone and you only follow a couple of characters who you also saw in the first book, but I thought it was a pity because I actually preferred reading about the characters in the first book and not really in this one. It was still really good, like Becky Chambers is amazing at writing characters, but I felt like sometimes the plot was a bit lacking and I just wasn't too invested in it. But nevertheless, I still really enjoyed this one. 3.75 over the five stars and definitely a character driven book. So if you like character driven books, this book series is for you. The next one is Middle Game by Shauna McGuire. I started reading this one in September of last year and I finally finished it. This is a story about Roger and Dodger. They are twins and they are created by an alchemist. They are separated, but they kind of have this connection and their maker called Reed wants to make sure that this connection becomes so strong that he can get very powerful. And that's kind of what I want to tell you about this book. This book is both very character driven and very plot driven, which I really, really loved about this book. It's just that sometimes I felt like it was a little bit slow and a little bit dense. And even though I was really feeling for the characters, it's a shame it took me so long to read because I think if I read it in a shorter amount of time, I would have enjoyed it much more. Hence why I'm only gonna give it four out of five stars, which is still really good, but I can understand if, if you read this like within a week or so, it will be much more intense and you will give it a higher rating. But nevertheless, I still really enjoyed it and I thought it was really good. I feel like switching sides. The next one is 21 Lessons for the 21st Century, written by Yuval Noah Harari. This is the second book in the Sapiens trilogy, which is a non-fiction series all about... Oh, this is the third book, I believe. Also, it's very dark. 
why didn't I do this sooner? Oh well. So the first book, Sapiens, is all about human beings and how they came to be. The second one is more about the future and things that we can expect for the future. And this one is also kind of things for the future, things that have to do with AI, technology, the world, you know, the, the environment. And even though this book was written in 2016 or 18, something like that. Well, the thing is, some of the things were much more relevant back then and are a little bit dated right now, but the majority of this book is still really, really relevant and it was just really good. But Sapiens was definitely my favorite and I think this is my least favorite of the three, but I'm still gonna give it four out of five stars because you will know Harari has a very interesting brain and he can explain things very, very well and has just great insight and ideas about what it's like being a human and what we can expect in the near future from like the world and some things are quite scary to read but also important to kind of be aware of. Then we've got Shark Heart, a love story written by Emily Haybeck, I think. This is a magical realism story that follows a couple and the husband is slowly turning into a great white shark, literally. This was written in a very interesting poetic format and I thought it was so Good. At first I thought, you know, I didn't know what to expect. It felt a bit weird, someone turning into a great white shark, but the execution of this book was amazing. And I really, really felt for the characters. The character development was really beautiful and emotional and super interesting as well. This was just such a big surprise. So I never expected to like it this much. So if you do see it somewhere, I highly recommend it. It was just really good and really beautiful. And quite sad as well. So that's why I give it 4.25 out of 5 stars. Then we've got I Am, I Am, I Am, written by Maggie O'Farrell. This is a memoir and Maggie O'Farrell wrote Hamnet. I never really knew anything about her. I got this book as a gift because one of my best friends knows that, she, you know, that I really like reading memoirs. And even though I didn't really know much about her, this book was so interesting and scary as well because this is about 17 near-death experiences that she has had in her life. How? This is crazy. So she is going into all of these in great detail, definitely very tough and scary to read at times and the way that she's so open about many of these quite difficult experiences that she has had in her life is very inspiring that she's so very open about this and can still be so very positive in life with so many things that did not go very well. So this was an amazing memoir. Highly recommend, four and a half out of five stars. Then we've got In the Company of Witches by Orly Wallace, which is a very cute, cozy mystery that is quite magical as well because it's about a B&B that is um, run by a couple of witches. And suddenly someone or like, one of the guests is found dead in the B&B. So it's a kind of mystery of how did that person die? Do they need to use magic to find out how and why? And it was just really, really fun. It has a Gilmore Girls meets Practical Magic vibe with a B&B and it was super enjoyable. Was this the best book ever? Absolutely not. But the enjoyment factor of this book it was amazing, hence why I want to give it four and a half out of five stars. I just enjoyed it so much. I flew through it. I devoured this book, as you can see. It is very well loved. Oh, there it is. <laughs> and it was just wonderful. So I really want to read the second book in a series as well, even though I have heard it's not as fun as the first one, but still, I really want to read the second book in the series. Highly recommend this one if you're looking for like a cozy mystery with magic. Okay, it's time for my top three books of this month and one of them is a reread, so this one's quite easy to, you know, rate. It's the first book in the Lord of the Rings series, The Fellowship of the Ring, because I've been rereading this one and it's just amazing. The first time I read it, or like the first time I tried to read it, I think it was like 10 years ago, and I thought it was so incredibly boring and long and slow, so I didn't even finish it then. Then I actually read it in 2017 when I was traveling through New Zealand, which is of course Lord of the Rings land, basically, <laughs> Middle Earth, because I saw the book in, in like a hostel that I was staying at and I thought, okay, this is it. This is my sign to read the book. Then I finished it within like three days and I was just hooked. And from that moment on, I was just in love with it. And even though it is quite slow, you get sucked into the story and 
It's amazing. So this was a very lovely reread. And of course I'm gonna give it five out of five stars. Okay, so I have two books that I absolutely loved this month. And I do know which one I want to put on the first spot for this month. So this is the runner up, which is Lie With Me, written by Philippe Besson. It's translated, it's originally, this was French. And this is about two men who had a brief relationship when they were quite young. Then later in life, one of the men is suddenly reminded of the other one and he is telling the entire story about how they met and, you know, their relationship, their brief but very, very intense relationship. And it was so emotional and beautiful and it's super, super short, but just, oh, it was so freaking good. So if you like this very character-driven books that make you feel all the emotions and are just full of love and heartbreak and beauty and pain and this is one of those books so this was amazing five out of five stars but the reason i'm not gonna put this on my first place this month is because i also read this one and i thought this was everything that i wanted in a book it is called The Lost Bookshop, written by Evie Woods, and it's the perfect book about books. It's about a lost bookshop. It's about lost manuscripts. It's about Shakespeare and Company in Paris. It's about the Bronte sisters. It's about magic, relationships, very interesting storylines from the past and the present, and it just had everything that I wanted in a book. So I love this one. It is quite big, but I listened to this on audiobook and the audiobook was amazing. It's been a long time since I was so into an audiobook that I constantly wanted to continue listening to it. And I did. I felt so much for these characters because you kept switching between like the present, like the past and the present and how all of the characters were connected. I just it's definitely a good mix between like character driven and plot driven aspects because so much was happening and I was constantly just on the edge of my seat like oh my goodness what's going to happen you know how is all of this connected what is happening with all of the characters what has happened and I just loved it very much I got this one for Christmas randomly from my aunt she saw it in a bookstore and thought I would like it well I did it was absolutely amazing so i highly recommend this book and even though both of these books were so amazing this one just made me feel this extra bit of oh, this is why i love reading this is why i love books books have something very magical and this is exactly what this was all about a magical story about books basically these were all of the books that i read in january however there was also one book that i did not finish and decided to dnf namely house of leaves i started reading this book um quite some time ago and i honestly just wasn't too into it hence why i decided to dnf it because every time i picked up this book i was hoping that it would be one of these pages like hardly any text but when it was like this and there's just so much text i was disappointed which is not how you should feel when you're reading a book this was about a house that is bigger on the inside than it is on the outside you follow different povs of people inside the house and someone kind of outside with his story and i couldn't be bothered by his story i just wanted to know what was happening inside the house but i didn't think there was enough of it so i decided to dnf it and it felt <gasps> so good so if you're reading a book that you're not enjoying please just dnf it so in the end i started out with 92 unread books i finished 12 books i dnf'd one book but because one of the books was a reread i read slash dnf'd 12 books of my physical tbr which means i've got 80 books left and this was honestly one of the most successful reading months i've had ever and I'm very excited for what the rest of the year will bring. I'm also doing short like TBR updates on my Instagram and on TikTok with these short videos quickly going through the books I read and how much I've got left on my TBR. So if you want to follow me on there and just get a quick recap of these tackling my TBR updates, you can find all of the links in the description of my video. And yeah, I like doing a wrap up again. It's been a long time since I've done a reading wrap up like a monthly reading wrap up so i really hope that you liked this video and if you did please do give it a thumbs up and if you want to comment something but you don't know what to comment comment a black cat emoji because of in the company of witches there is a little black cat here on the cover 
Thank you again so much for watching. I really hope you're having a beautiful day and I will see you in my next video.